week we are preparing for our annual week-long camping trip, which means a lot of running around back and forth to, from the townhome to the trailer and a few little upgrades to make our week a little bit more comfortable. Three inch memory foam. And so he Googled how do you cut memory foam? We went and found, what is it? Electric knife. It's actually a filet knife. It's a filet knife. It's in the fishing department. And it's cutting through this thing like butter. So that's what we're doing today. We just kind of drew a sharpie around the mattress. Um, but this is the way to do it. Like that, that knife is amazing. We might be uh, destroying the sharpie by drawing on memory foam. Quick tip about how to get a sharpie back to use color. Get a finger, put it on your tongue, and then just tap the thing down and go back. That's your tip of the day. But seriously, this thing was $15 at Walmart. I'll probably uh, wash the blades and actually, I don't know, carve a turkey with it. Okay, so trimming is not happening very well. When I was going straight through like two big pieces, it worked really well. You need to get on that one. Don't do this at home. I'm doing this totally wrong, I'm sure. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm a professional. So it's not beautiful, but I think it'll work. Do you agree? So the downfall of having a dual slide in the main living area is we have to pull this slide out just to get in and then we have to pull the slide out in their bunk room so we can get in there to put his new mattress on his bed. Yeah. So this is what the bunk room looks like with it closed. So this is like, I don't know, half a person. Can't get in there. So out this goes, this goes. Um. This one has a whole different like mechanical blah blah blah. Uh -huh. It sounds different from the other slides. So difficult with her. You no, know, difficult in general. Come on, Sopo, we're waiting. My slowness is beautiful. So, so we were in the trailer for October, November, December, January, like four months. Plus we've had already a camping trip. We have another one coming up. So apparently the, they don't last that long, but if you only use it a couple times a year, the mattress will last a while. Yeah. Always fun times. Okay, home to do school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, I don't think it is raining. That's the issue. Because now the inside of my house is sopping wet. <laughs> oh, 
I'll wait oh, for yeah, that. See ya. Fine. He's in a hurry. just dropped the older two kids off at youth group. Unfortunately, it's their last night for youth. Um, over the summer, they apparently don't hold the normal weekly meetings because kids don't really show up. So that is new to us because we're used to it. Summer being pretty, um, pretty important for youth. So anyways, I am at the trailer again. I think this is load number three or four this week. Um, just trying to get stuff over here little by little so we are ready for a camping trip coming up here. Uh, so I got to unload everything back here. I've got a paddle board. I didn't want to prep the trailer too early because you know you put food in there and then it gets hot and it's all spoiled. Even Hope you guys have had a good week so far. I know it has been really crazy with weather like guys it snowed in montana yesterday like in a couple different places i hope wherever you are is decent weather and that you are safe from any horrible hundred year floods that are happening around yellowstone some people i knew were camping in yellowstone so i'm like i don't even know if they made it out we've been in yellowstone a lot phil used to um go to yellowstone every week for part of his work so it's crazy to see that much water moving through that area and washing roads out and bridges. Um, it's just super crazy and I'm sure terrifying for the people that are directly involved, but um, we are drying up today. So we're thankful for that. And um, I'm going to get this car unloaded so I can go home and have dinner. So to turn the battery on and off, you have to climb into this garage and the only way to get the sled in and out is to have the battery on. So always remember to turn that off before you lock things up. Otherwise you'll come back and have zero battery. As it is, it probably drains it too much just using it to move the sled in and out, but I got no other options right now. So I got the trailer done and I realized I didn't do a very good job of getting any footage of anything else we did today. The girls and I went to our other storage unit because we needed the other paddle board and a few other things for our camping trip. And then we went to the library, went to Walmart, we went to the dog kennel. Matthew was with Phil today at work and I think he worked him to the bone, which is cool. It's really cool to see when um, you know, a year or two ago, he'd go to work with dad, right? And then there's usually some frustration because it's like, they, they wanted to do something for him, but they weren't allowed to because they weren't big enough or strong enough or, you know, or he would need help with something, but they really couldn't help because it was something they were unable to do or didn't understand. But now they are like huge assets when he takes them to work. They um, actually they get paid. They get paid well. Um, heck, I should probably go work for him. I don't get paid for uh, staying home, teaching the kids, and making bread and all that good stuff. But it was really cool to see. So he shows up at home after having painted and like done plumbing and all the stuff today. He shows up at home covered in grease because they had to move uh, his work trailer. And I don't know. If you've ever done something like that, like you tried so hard to stay clean during a project and it was like the very last minute you maybe dumped paint on yourself or you know, stepped backwards into something you shouldn't have stepped in, um, leave that comment down below and tell us your story because I'd like to believe that we're not the only ones to do ridiculous things like that. Well, it's that time again. We gotta go get Matthew and Stephanie. He decided he needs to come with. It really doesn't fit back there. I mean, he does, but I have to lay the seat down. Otherwise, he doesn't want to jump in. Anyways, whatever. 
we got him before this whole situation happened with not having property or when we got Dakota, I drove an excursion. So not a problem, right? Plenty of room for him and the kids and Kenai, whatever. <laughs> So we had the excursion and then we got the Volkswagen Beetle, which is great, but it doesn't work for him. So now we've got Betty, as we've named her. We bought a white Forerunner. Happened to be the same year Betty White died, probably the same month. And so, there you go. dogs are they're a thing can't live with them and you can't live without them right so I was thinking on my way over here have you ever been so thankful for something you didn't get so when you've asked for something whether you know it's a gift that you really thought you wanted or maybe it's a life circumstance that you've prayed a lot about and just asking for that um, blessing but it turns out you got something totally different and it wasn't what you thought you wanted or what you needed but it turned out to be better than what you had requested it just is something to think about because many people right now are in situations that it's not where they it is not the destination they put into maps it's not where they want it to be um, it's never where they imagined maybe they would be, but they're there. So what do you do with it? What do you do when you're there unexpectedly or unintentionally or against your will? You embrace it, right? You make the best of it, learn from it. Those times are probably where a lot of people experience the most growth because they're forced to, I guess, think outside the box, do things out of their comfort zone and grow in a time and situation that they otherwise wouldn't have ever been in because they didn't plan on it. Just a thought for today. So I've been waiting for the kids for 10 minutes. Anyways, they texted me and said, we've been released, but um, we're gonna stay here till 8.30. <laughs> I am really glad that they love being at youth and they don't want to come home. But like I said before, this is their last meeting for the spring. And then they take the summer off. Um, how does your church do it? How do your kids survive the summer if they don't have something like youth group? My kids are not in sports. Obviously, we're new to the area, so we don't have a ton of connections. Um, besides a few people they've met um, while at youth, they don't really know anybody. So... I would love to hear what you guys do, what um, your kids enjoy during the summer. Um, it was so much easier when they were little and you could just take them to a park. They'd play with anybody. doesn't work that way anymore. I'm looking for ideas for teenagers, small town teenagers. Tell me in the comments below, what does your church do for the kids during the summer? Um, I feel like larger churches, maybe in larger areas, might have a lot more activities and weekly events that happen then you come to a smaller area and I don't know people travel so they're not home during the summer maybe or I don't know I'm not really sure why there's not the push that I wish there was that I've seen in other areas for extended um, activities for the kids you know barbecues um, volleyball games the, the list there's a lot of things that they could do but anyways let me know down below what you guys do what your church does what your kids do for the summer <laughs> we attempted to take Dakota to the dog park but there were a lot of dogs there for almost nine o'clock so we just walked around at a people park 
and he smelled all the things and is very excited. Tried to eat a rock. Tried. He went stuff. all in. Like he saw a rock is about the size of a softball. He thought it was going to be his toy. He went all in. Like he probably could have broke a tooth. But that's not what I'm here to tell you. I'm going to drive around in a parking lot now. Because we're not really can. a parking lot. We're going to oh. drive around the block. We're off. Well, good morning. Sorry, I just dropped the ball yesterday. I didn't finish anything. Um, um, today we are going to wrap up some of the stuff we started yesterday, finish getting everything ready for our camping trip. Um, Phil needs to go back to the one storage unit to get the generator and the pop-up like shelter. Because if we don't bring it, we'll definitely need it. If we bring it, we probably won't use it, right? So part of getting ready for camping is the list, right? What kind of food do we need to pack? What kind of clothes do we need to pack? Um, all the little things like, so Kenai is coming with us, which means I need to pack food for her, leashes, bowls. What if she gets into something and we need, you know, brushes to get burrs out of her hair? It's just like packing up the whole house to just go somewhere to relax for a week. So Phil just called me from like Quick Lube. And he's starting to tell me this story about how getting oil changes is going to get interesting. And then he says, I got to go. What in the world is happening to this world? I read yesterday that DEF, which is an additive, I think, for diesel engines that were built after like 2015 or something like that. Um, they need it to run. But DEF is something that is now in short supply because the main ingredient of it is exported out of certain places that are either no longer exporting it or no longer making it or mining it or whatever it is. And that's a huge problem for people that have newer diesel trucks. So this is gonna be fun. One more thing to add to the list of what are we gonna do about this? I've gotta go make a loaf of bread and cookies. Gotta make cookies. See, this is what I'm talking about. You stress yourself out so you can go relax for a week with zero cell service, zero power, just you, your friends, a lake. It's gonna be great, but the getting there is a rough road. So I've gotta get going. Subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, leave a comment. See you in the next video. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching! watching.